Sleepers Podcast, it's Friday. You know exactly what I'm about to say. Riley Davis is in the building. Riley, may I say, dare I say, you look like you're glowing today. Is there new lighting going on in your room? Did you add an additional door? <laughs> no, I just have the windows open. I got my ring light going. Uh, my face just must have a natural radiance after watching Kendrick perform Not Like Us five times in a row last night as well. It's a good, it's a good technically Thursday, but I'm sure it'll be a good Friday too by the time the fine people are listening to this. Carter, are you okay? Are you hanging in there after the whole Kendrick pop-up performance last night that seemed entirely aimed at taking down you and your hero? It was a pop-up concert or a pop-up shop? It's a concert. Oh, yeah, I got to tap in. You haven't seen it? No. Have you muted... The words Kendrick on your social media is that, I mean, that's the only way you uh, miss this. I don't even know how to do that. You don't. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Well, songs that this Drake were played five times consecutively last night. Really in a row, huh? Including many of the greatest other artists in hip hop there helping clown Drake, including people that have been in Drake videos and friends with Drake in the past. The, it was a sellout arena screaming the words a minor that's crazy i guess he doesn't have enough music to play other songs he's got to repeat songs huh it just kind of seems like everybody seems to have crowned the champion here officially and the other guy is singing wagwan delilah crowned a champion because some ringless nba players some aforementioned good players but losers it's pretty indicative of Kendrick Lamar's career. It makes sense that Russell Westbrook and DeMar DeRozan were on stage. <laughs> LeBron was in attendance, though. Was he on the stage? I don't think he was on the stage, no. Exactly, because he's not a loser. It doesn't seem great that LeBron was in attendance for this event, does it? Like, I thought he was Drake's guy. Maybe it was a good concert. You're just doubling and tripling down, Cart? That's what we're doing? We're just digging deeper and deeper here. Family Matters is still the best thing to come out of this. This. All right. Okay. Uh, Card, I can look forward to you being courtside whenever Drake decides to do his Kendrick disc concert, right? I'm just glad he's opening his mouth finally. <laughs> okay. Let's get to the show. Do you have a YouTube comment of the day, Card? I do. We are going to go with... Oh, that's a... People need to watch their language in these comments. We have Malik Perry in the YouTube comments. Oh, hey. let's go. Calling me not black. Ah. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and skip that because I don't <laughs> want to do that. Um, Okay. This one comes from Anthony Paella. As much as I love my Illini and Coleman, let's be real here. In a seven-game series, UConn wins that 4-0 or 4-1. Can I get a comment on what the score would have been or what the game series would have looked like in a seven-game series between UConn and Illinois last season? Obviously, UConn being up 1-0 in this exercise because they are up 1-0. Riley, go ahead. I like the 4-1 pull. Um, 4-0 would very much be on the table just because, like, when was the last time UConn lost last season? Uh, Their losses were few and far between. Yeah, crazy, and maybe. They lost three games all season. Just a – you don't see that anymore in this iteration of college basketball where teams have gotten – smarter using the portal so i don't know i think there's a good chance it's a sweep but maybe the the Illini can get one are I, they all, all all played on neutral if it's oh i guess if, if they're alternating i think illinois will get one in champagne all neutral all new if it's all neutral i'll take the defending national champs and the coach that has won 12 consecutive ncaa tournament games by double digits i mean it has not broken a sweat once in any game to sweep the team that wanted to attack Donovan Flingen as their game plan. So, so four zero is what I'm getting out of that. I am. I think it would be a very comfortable four zero sweep. And I will like. I love. I loved the entire Coleman Hawkins interview. I'm really proud of it. Honestly, I think it's some of the best content we've ever produced. I thought we were very prepared and had some great questions for him. I was not surprised by a lot of things he revealed on the show. I was stunned that he said they would beat UConn if they played them one more time. Stunned. 
I wasn't asked on when I really thought about it because it's player on team you're asking about saying they could be other team. I I I appreciate that approach. Yeah. It just, even if it means even if it means lying or delusional. It went straight in like he gave that answer and you could tell it kind of like how much he got into it. He was like rocking back and forth a little bit, like, man, we ha- we would have him. But then he started going into why, and all the reasons why were why you lost by 40. <laughs> like He's like, yeah, we'd get him if we had 20 more minutes. It's just that Brad had the worst personnel on the floor and didn't use me at all. Like, okay, then yeah, why would that change next time? Like, I don't I think it was a horrible matchup for him, and uh there's nothing they could do. Ty Rogers couldn't play in that game. Yeah, 4 0. I agree. 4 0. Okay. Uh good speaking of that though, good viral day for us on social media yesterday. A lot of interact shout out to D Turp for making some graphics for us. Uh Riley, you finally got your graphic last week. Are you happy with D Turp's work for you? I loved my graphic. Anytime I see my like my headshot turn into graphic form with a nice little accent around it, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, good. Good to know. Uh yeah, good good time all around in the last couple of days. Hopefully we can end this show with a bang. Riley's got secretive topics and we have comments to get to from the Discord. Riley, I don't know that we've ever asked you to do this, but now that you've been in the Discord for a little over a month, would you mind explaining to people what you either like or dislike about being in the Sleepers Discord? There's always something going on. Whatever you like want to discuss, there's a are they threads? channel yeah i'm still getting used to the terminology here there's a channel for that the music channel is always fun pet pet picks always a good time live game discussion doesn't matter the sport someone's probably chatting about it episode discussion is probably my favorite channel because it's always it's nice to be among friends breaking down what you just heard um so if you don't know if, if you don't have friends in real life um maybe get some, but (laughs) (laughs) if you don't have friends in real life who listen to this show, why not spend more time on your phone? It's already rotting your brain anyway. What's 30 minutes more chatting discussions about the, about the episodes with the lads, with the ladies all in one place, join the discord Mm nine 99 a month. If you join on desktop, come on, Riley, come on, Riley, what are we fired up? Uh, to the comments from the Discord, we start today with Sleeve Nash, who said, I felt bad because I didn't formally introduce myself to Riley. What's good, Riley? I'm Sleeve, and I always enjoy watching you on Fridays. With that being said, welcome to Sleeve Tropolis. Sleeve Tropolis. Uh, Sleeve was going at, I think it was Braden Shrewsbury yesterday. We just Sleeve seems like he might be a chaos agent. I'm intrigued by Sleeve, one of the newer additions to the Discord. I don't know where he's headed here. But uh, Andre L says, I'm about to be that guy who overreacts to a 20 second Twitter clip, but I saw a clip of Maluak and my Lord, how is anybody going to score on that dude next to flag? This could be some AD MKG level freshman defense. And then Duke just wins the title. Riley, are you afraid of a Maluak flag defensive pairing? We'll get to that. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Jack J7 says, we are just under one month away from the NCAA 25 drop. What's the first thing you're going to do in the game, and what aspect are you most excited about? Ooh, first thing I'm going to do. Honestly, straight up, quick start, quick game. I need to get one under my belt before I even dive into any game modes. Just random teams. I don't even really care. I'm not even going to set the difficulty. I just need to get my cleats wet. I like that. Riley? I don't have a next-gen console. Hashtag four, make fun of me. But <laughs> I will be going over to a, a friend's house, much like I did in high school. You know, I was never the first to get the game. I was always later down the line. I would get it eventually. Um, but yeah, well, maybe, maybe we'll probably hit a quick game as well. Um, I don't know. I got to think through what team I, I needs to be like my go-to exhibition team. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to be a big Logan Thomas at Virginia Tech guy when it would just be time to like, you don't want to pick too loaded of a team, um, but one that was like halfway decent with a mobile quarterback. I like that pick. Uh, the very first thing that I will do is do a dynasty mode, create my coach. My coach's name will be John Jacus. I will be bald with uh, some horrible beard, facial hair. Uh, it, I will take over Florida Atlantic's football program. And then I will immediately handicap myself by putting all of my least talented players as first string on the depth chart. I will put a free safety at quarterback and a tight end at running back. And then I will run the read option 
65 consecutive times on uh whatever the the what's the highest level the heisman, heisman. level uh, heisman level uh until we lose the game inevitably by 34 points that'll be the first thing i do okay then very excited uh okay i mayner says were you guys into harry potter growing up if so which college basketball fan bases get sorted into which hogwarts houses riley this seems right up your alley yeah, I never read the books, only seen the movie. Uh, Duke probably wants to be Slytherin, but they're a Hufflepuff with all the dorks. So <laughs> UConn feels Slytherin-y to me. That makes sense. Who's Gryffindor? Gonzaga. That feels about right. I'm glad they're you said good. So Are there any more besides that? What's the fourth one? Dan Hurley's kind of shaped like a Quidditch ball. Right. Head is. Uh, I, I am not a Harry Potter guy. These guys are pretending they're not Harry Potter guys while just rattling off names of the houses. That was funny to me. Uh, I don't get it. I don't, I've never read the books, have not watched the movies. So sorry, I made her. Do you answer. have a Chamber of Secrets by any chance? No. Also, like, who's the who's the writer of this? J.K. Rowling? Yeah, isn't, isn't there, like, problematic stuff going on with J.K. Rowling right now? I can't believe you're giving shine to this card. Is there problematic stuff? I thought there was. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I slander J.K. Rowling any chance I get. Like, there's Gunna is a better writer than J.K. Rowling. I have heard that if you go back and read the Harry Potter books as an as an adult, they are not particularly well written. Mm. Yeah, tough. Well, Good thing I don't read. Shout, shout out to anybody who monetizes things that are poorly written. That's uh, that's hard to do. I've been trying for years. Uh, also, <laughs> shout out Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe, very talented man. Just Who's that? He played Harry, I believe, in the movies. I wasn't. I thought that was the dude that played Spider Man. No. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. Uh uh. So <laughs> that was Toby. Toby McGuire. Ah. Uh. Yeah, we're talking Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter. Who's now wait? Did you think that Toby McGuire? You didn't think Toby McGuire played Harry, did you? No. Okay, no. you just thought his name was Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. Okay. That's it. All right, I made her second question here. Since we all have uh, all we have for a few months is baseball, which college basketball players fit the best baseball player archetypes? So we have five archetypes: control pitcher, power hitter, five tool player, leadoff man, utility infielder. Uh, are we supposed to envision basketball players playing baseball, and like who would be these, or are we twisting the definition to apply to basketball? I think we're twisting the definition to apply to basketball. Like I like the power hitter would be Umar Ballo, you know, like someone who's okay. just so in it's, there. It's to not grab like we think Umar Ballo could take a bat and get 34 home runs. Like that's not the mental exercise. It's more just like he's a power hitter in baseball. Yeah, I would yeah, have a yeah. different answer for that. Yeah, he'd be the power player. Got it. I I would I'm gonna give my answers for the baseball version. You guys do the first version. <laughs> Well, lead off, I would like to vote for Braden Smith. These yeah. guys set the table, get on base. Mm -hmm. Um, also looks like a lead off guy. Um, five tool. Does that mean just good at everything? Yeah. Ooh. Five tool good at I, I would say Cooper Flag. Yeah, Cooper Flag was my thought too, if he if he hits. Yeah. And then what were the other two? Utility infielder. Utility. Who's, like the, who's like the best perimeter? Uh, I would think of like the the best outfielder is like the best perimeter defender, but maybe I'm I don't know baseball like that. Maybe like know. a Lamont Butler. I guess so. Greg's probably gonna have more fun with this exercise, just making them actual baseball players. Yeah, I I have my answers prepared if we can go. Uh, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, go so ahead. my my leadoff man is Daniel Freitag from Wisconsin. Just <laughs> totally, totally feels sounds like a Wisconsin baseball player. A five tool player is Trey Galloway. Trey Galloway would be an absurdly elite baseball player. You could put him anywhere, outfield, infield. He hits for contact, hits for power, speed, fields his position, stud. Uh power hitter is Sizamon Zapala. That man would always hit cleanup for me. He's going to strike out or he's going to hit for the fences. One of the two every single time. I think he'd get 30 homers and 100 strikeouts. Control pitcher is Benham Rickhouse. 
Uh, I feel great about him in the middle innings. If, if we're up four runs, down four runs, he can eat innings for me, three innings at a time. And utility infielder without question is Connor Seager. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense to me. I'm I'm surprised you didn't pick like any actual baseball player. Like, isn't Mason Gillis a baseball player? Is he? Thought he was. He strikes me as a good power hitter. Hmm. I I didn't know that Mason Gillis did anything outside of basketball with his free time other than the other things he's. Oh, heavens. Uh, Guy. Guy says, I've been eating a lot of peanut butter items recently. What are your favorite ways to consume peanut butter? I mean, peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter, banana with honey is really good. Um, Any peanut butter chocolate, you really can't miss with that. Reese's, Reese's take five, anything like that. Reese's cups, whatever. Um, Honestly, sleeper peanut pick. butter pretzels. Yeah, oh, that's pretzel a good one. stuff with peanut butter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sleeper picks just a little little spoonful of peanut butter in your acai bowl really mm. sets it off. That is that's good, good crazy. Bowl. But wow, you don't like acai bowls, do you, Greg? No, but I just I can't imagine putting peanut butter in one of those. Like, yeah, just just a little there. little 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 spoonful of peanut butter, just or maybe a peanut butter drizzle on top of the of the fruit on the acai bowl. Wow, it's, wow. Respect. Yeah. Uh, peanut butter cookies slap. You guys already hit the big one. P- Reese's eggs, special peanut butter and jelly. Great. You guys have heard my take that peanut butter and jelly on tortillas are actually better than peanut butter and jelly on regular bread. Uh, peanut butter and banana toast. Fantastic in the morning. Yeah. They're, I mean, pe- we're a pro peanut butter podcast. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, is, is this a safe space, Greg? Safe enough. So it, in my younger days, probably in like elementary when I was, I was a very, very large kid. As you can tell by how big I am now, I was a big kid and I had a lot of big back activities. Um, One of those big back activities that I cut off pretty quickly because my parents probably wanted me to live longer was that I was eating jars of peanut butter, like ice cream, like legit getting a spoon and eating peanut butter. Like it was ice cream out of a jar and then I realized, like, I just can't do this. Like, I was eating it like to the point where I got sick. I ate so much peanut butter. Could you do that right now? Like, if we just asked you to take like a large jar of peanut butter, like, could you eat a full one and enjoy it? It's too much sugar. Yeah, couldn't do it. That's a great punishment for future bets, though. I really <laughs> that like that. Uh, okay, I Mayner says, do you guys have any insight on the bag size difference between high school recruits and portal guys? How many high school guys are really getting a bag? Do high school recruits also get bigger bags for signing later? I can't imagine that a high school player gets as big of a bag as the top transfers, especially the ones who are still uncommitted late in the cycle when people you know, want to basically have money to blow. I I believe it would be hard to convince donors to convince your top boosters to spend that much money on someone who is not proven at all, despite their high school pedigree, at least with a transfer that you're spending on, you can point to college stats. You can point toward accomplishments. I think that just carries way more weight than saying this dude was in the McDonald's all American game and had 20 points when guys weren't really playing defense. Right. Also, I think it's more so factored in with high school kids is like, what is their platform before they got there? Mm-hmm. Like Jared McCain was probably making just as much as uh, a lot of the big time transfer making. But that probably had a lot to do with his actual marketability uh, instead of like his actual uncle, which was great. I'm not downside downplaying his on court play, but like I'm guessing guys like him, Rob Dillingham, you know, guys with large social media followings, I think we're uh, are able to capitalize a little bit more on NIL as freshmen compared to the big bucks that are getting thrown around. But like, there's also been numbers like Bryson Tucker got 700 K apparently as a freshman, which is dang, which is crazy. Yeah. Big ones are still getting paid. That's, that's the reality. Like Bryson Tucker got what you just said. And I would assume players of his caliber are higher still getting paid. I think the guys that got hurt are like mid four stars and three star recruits. Like those ones are not going to get a sizable offer because of what the transfer portal has become. But um, no, the best players are still getting paid. Still strongly believe that. Fam says, uh, happy bluffs Friday, fam. It's getting hot as piss outside. What's your favorite drink? Both every day and special occasion responses appreciated. Every day, I'm a big seltzer guy, particularly bubbly. That's uh, my go-to brand these days. Y'all know how much I love a two-hearted ale if I'm choosing to um, imbibe some of the devil's brew. 
on special occasions, I love a good cab when I'm getting wow. to my wine, my my wine bag. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Have you tried the lighthearted ale? I have not. It has tempted me, but yeah. would you would you recommend? I'd recommend. It. I'm not. I'm not the biggest two hearted guy, straight up. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. um, so I'd much rather have the the light two hearted ale. Same with me. I like the light hearted though, and I don't like two hearted. Oberon, like- Oberon is the most overrated beer of all time. Oh, right. I'm not crazy about Oberon. I like that Oberon Eclipse though. The Oberon Eclipse is really good, well, but the normal Oberon. Do- what we're not going to do is slander my wife's previous work establishment, okay? We're it's- not. I just two hearted ale is arguably my favorite day. beer. Card, do you have an answer, or are you just going to shit on beers you don't like? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was specifically for Riley. Um, I start my day before I do anything. Twenty ounces, straight water. I have to do it. If I don't, my day is cooked. I need twenty ounces of water. I've been trying to freak it lately. Like I saw some TikTok guy put some Himalayan sea salt in his water. That sucks. I'm not doing that anymore. But if I don't get 20 ounces of water to start my day, my day is cooked. Um, Otherwise, throughout the day, if it ain't water, right now I've been on a Corona Premier kick. Corona Premier is really good with a little, little, little hint of lime in there. Big fan of that. So it's either that straight water or an ice latte mm. ice latte slap wow uh first off start demanding 20 ounces of anything before you even start your day or saying your day is cooked is so needy that's incredibly needy it's it's on brand for me though right yeah a little bit um i love milk specifically because i love talking about how much i love milk in front of carter and pissing him off so i've been drinking a lot of milk lately for that reason uh, I love Tang. I've been just recreationally drinking Tang for a couple of weeks now. Uh, it's very good, sippable drink. Highly recommend. It's hard to get these days. Uh, my my true favorite concoction of liquid beverage is uh, an Arnold Palmer and or a John Daly. Just lemonade mixed with iced tea in the summer. It's so perfect. And if you put a little vodka in it, it's fantastic. Or as Carter knows, you can get a wand daily with tequila instead of vodka in it. That is also very good. Thanks for the question, fam. Also, great use of the word piss in your sentence. It's hot as piss outside. Guy says, happy Riley Friday. Chances are, while you're reading this, I'll be on a plane. Isn't that cool? Tens of thousands of feet in the air, moving at hundreds of miles per hour. Human innovation really is incredible. I don't know why we had to read that on the show. Uh, I Maynard says I was listening to Duke basketball roundup with Braden Marks as a guest in regards to North Carolina's portal woes. He basically said, RJ is the national preseason player of the year getting paid X. And it's hard to convince donors to pay a lesser player the same money or more. Riley, this would allude to the poor allegations that we've thrown your way that you keep shutting down. Uh, first off, I love Brendan Marks. That's he's a great dude. Covers both UNC and Duke quite well. He is a UNC grad. Um, Secondly, yeah, I don't think that donors or the team really wanted to pay anybody more than they paid RJ. Easy solution, I would say just pay RJ more, but can't just make money appear like that. So Makes sense. Even when you're paying, I guess, a national player of the year level player, you don't. I mean, uh, uh, maybe have a different approach financially, but hey, not my bags. No comment. No comment. I certainly wouldn't want to speak to anything that uh, I'm not supposed to speak to on North Carolina being poor and maybe not having money for players that maybe would have been interested in pay, playing at North Carolina if they did have the money for them. No no comment. Right. On no comment. Uh-huh. All right. Ulamog says, Riley, are you concerned about your co-host's interest in the Latter-day Saints? Once the BYU fans find the full podcast, do we need to introduce Mormon Mondays? Um... I would be saddened if you go to a Mormon church before you come to a crew at UNC meeting to support me. I'll 100% show up to a meeting. Thursday nights during the school year. Let's make it happen. With all due respect, it just feels like the Saints have a little more funds right now. Like, (laughs) and we're we're a (laughs) funds-based podcast. Are there there snacks and beverages available at crew meetings? Sometimes, yes. (laughs) Sometimes? Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. The funds are nowhere to be found, Cart. 
Nah, a lot of these Saints ain't letting us go snackless, dog. Kurt, we pull up to Provo. I guarantee they have a bowl full of Cheetos puffs handed to you. And a charcuterie. Yeah, crazy. Uh, okay, we have a flurry of Malik Perry comments coming. I'm just warning everybody. Uh, uh, Carter just saw the Jakari Harris video, and I have to say, why don't you think his mom is Spanish? Because I haven't done my deep dive into Jakari Harris's family tree. Haven't had the chance yet. Carter, why you always want to be part of someone's family? Everything okay, buddy? I mean, I've spoken to this before. It, throw me in a non-supportive family role, I probably excel a lot better. Riley Fry, since you like ducking my questions, how ass will North Carolina be if they don't get a five? P.S. Where can I get steroids from? I hear you know people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think UNC is going to settle in as like a top 15 team. The floor is a lot lower because the front court could be pretty dire. Um, yeah, I think the guards and wings will be really good, which should be enough to, I would say, I, I can't really see them get, getting higher than like a three or a four seed come tournament time. Maybe they make a little run to the second weekend, but I, yeah, I'm, I am sad still. So rest assured, I'm, I'm still not happy and wish we had a big seven footer in the middle to just block shots and grab boards and dunk. Yeah. Like, but we don't Danislav golden wolf could have done wonders for you guys, but didn't happen. Uh, two more from Malik Hawkins interview was really good. Funny how some Illinois fans coming at him for doing what's best for his future. And then I owe Melba an apology. I was wrong and can admit that with four scrimmage games allowed. Now, who would you want your teams to play? Who do you want your team to scrimmage? Last year, Cart, you got to see Dalton connect. That was fun. Yeah, um, I want to scrimmage UConn. I want to scrimmage Houston. I want to scrimmage Kansas. And I want to scrimmage Gonzaga. Okay. Riley? Uh, let's see. We're playing Kansas in the first game of the year. I want to. I still want to scrimmage them. I want to scrimmage Auburn, and I want to scrimmage Creighton. Because I want us to play Hunter, Janai Broom, and Ryan Kalkbrenner to like force the staff to just go drop a huge bag for some Australian center who's seven three to come play in Chapel Hill before the season starts. That's very well thought out and actually all very smart answer. Yeah, it's good. I want to scrimmage Michigan State, Rutgers, North Carolina, and then Michigan State again. Because I want to face teams with no answers for my front court. Right on. There you have it. Regress says, happy Riley Friday to those who celebrate. Riley Fridays, the one thing none of us could give up for Lent. <laughs> Riley, in 1461, His Holiness Pope Pius II sent a letter to Sultan Mehmed II of the Ottoman Empire, a scant eight years after the Sultan conquered Constantinople. In his letter, he is said to have tried to persuade the Sultan to convert to Christianity, promising he would be the first among men and a hero to Christendom. The Sultan refused, but I believe that if anyone could have succeeded where the Pope failed, it would be Riley Davis. How would you have convinced him, Riley? Mm, great question. First off, I wouldn't just send a letter. Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna convince somebody that what you believe is true with a letter. Uh, then again, most of the Bible, the New Testament, is letters. Shout out to the Apostle Paul. So maybe the letter's the way to go. I try to meet with him in person, lay out. Uh, just I, I want to hear his life story, see where he's coming from, and I'd probably focus less about like you being this hero and this champion for Christendom, and just you know seeing where he's at on a personal level. I bet me and the Sultan would have hit it off, um, and then I would have asked, how many fun do you have just lying around to maybe propel a basketball program let's say 600 years from now small college town in north carolina if, if you catch my drift i was gonna ask it what well, i was gonna ask the sultan's wingspan is his <laughs> present day <laughs> sultan's a great word uh also is there actually a chapel on the hill in chapel hill there is a chapel there's a an episcopal chapel yeah that's yeah, like a pretty on common a hill is it on flat land it's on flat land Oh, missed opportunity. Chapel flat. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Here we go. Uh, DK Hurley truther says happy Riley Friday to you and yours. What is a bad thing that can reasonably happen to some top teams this year that you think will make the program better in the future? Because I'm superstitious. Please choose things for teams other than your own. So you don't speak it into existence. 
What bad thing could happen to good teams that would help their future? That would help their future. Bad things that happen to good teams that would help their future. So the initial thought that comes to mind is a bad year that keeps a player around for like next season maybe and they have like a recruit coming in you know like an nba talent level guy that is forced to come back for year two and is good in year two but i can't think about anybody right now what about like none of purdue's freshmen make an impact and it forces painter to utilize the portal next year and he brings in some studs that's a good angle i like that angle ah Okay, actually, I know what it is. I want Caravan to come back for another year for UConn. <laughs> I need Caravan to come back because I think if there's a four spot open that Hurley's going to fill it with some dogs. Could happen. Um, yeah, some, I don't know, some things for me. Uh, some things. You gotta well, like, could, could, like, Mark Pope wins eight games in year one. Like, he has a Jawan Howard bad year. And Kentucky just decides to cut bait instead of like giving him five years, like just expedite the Mark Pope failure timeline. Um, I think Riley, this is about your program. So I'm sorry. You're going to really fight me on this. Uh, Like a disaster year for Cadeau that forces Cadeau to transfer and you to get a different guard going forward. That would be like, you guys have a Caden Lewis coming on a visit. And we talked about this morning, like, why would a Caden Lewis want to go to a team that Elliot Cadeau is going to be on for two more years? Um, you would probably get a Caden Lewis, I think, if like he knew Elliot Cadeau wasn't there. Maybe some other high level guards that can make elbow jumpers. Kind of along those lines, Illinois cart. Like maybe they need someone to leave from that backcourt so they can get Jasper Johnson and Jeremiah Fierce. Mm. So may- maybe Kasparis is just awful. And that's really bad for them this year, but like he's not part of the plans for next year, so they can get two five star studs. Those would be UNC is also in for Jasper Johnson too. He's making he already did an official visit back in February, planning a return visit in the fall. So it's making the round. I'm a, I'm a big Jasper guy. I don't know if I was be, would be as big of a Jasper guy if his name wasn't Jasper, but <laughs> he can't change it. His name is Jasper. <laughs> Jasper is my favorite guard in the class. I love that kid. A few more here. Malik Perry. Uh, this for a glazed donut liquor named Carter. Just seen Caitlin Clark flex and she had muscles. Guess she lifting real weight, unlike baby chicken wing arms. Okay. There's one thing we're not gonna disrespect. It's me calling me baby chicken wing arms. All right. I think he's talking about Fletcher Lawyer. He just wants your comment. Fletcher Lawyer is stronger than Caitlin Clark. We're positive? Yep. Okay. Uh, if you could watch any team for free in any sport for the rest of your life, who would it be? You can only watch one team, one sport for the rest of your life, but for free, who is it? Ah. Uh, do I really want to waste this on Sism on Zapala? I don't know. Probably the Lions. Good answer. True to your heart, Riley. Oh, uh, man. I don't know. I, how, how is this not an immediate Carolina basketball? That's what I, I'm i like. Is that too obvious, though? Do I need to be more creative? Because Okay, then Carolina basketball. <laughs> yeah. Creativity here. Michigan right, State cool. basketball was definitely in the fold for me, but I don't know if I want to subject myself to that any longer. Yeah, mine would just be Michigan basketball. I love them too much. That's the answer. Uh, Burner605 says, Greg, my jaw literally hit the floor and I nearly got in a car accident when you said that Edie has the highest ceiling in the NBA draft. Is that because he's tall and requires literal higher ceilings? I'm a very pro Edie guy, but to say he has the highest ceiling is maybe the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard you say. I think he's nearly at his ceiling already. He is what he is. He will play in the league forever. I agree with Cart's take on Edie a thousand percent. If he's bad, he's still seven five and he won't get any smaller. So his floor is already a 10 year career. I am just truly in disbelief by the highest take or highest ceiling take. Are you okay? Did you drink before the show? Did someone pay you to say that? I may not sleep for a while. Uh, Here's where I'm coming from on this. I don't believe straight up. There is any other player in this draft that has a hall of fame chance. I don't believe it. I do not believe Alex Sar could ever be a Hall of Famer. I do not believe Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham, 
Donovan Klingon, Stefan Castle, name a guy. I don't believe any of those guys. There's even a 0.00001% outcome where they are an NBA Hall of Famer. I think this draft is filled with guys who might be good or they might be horrible. There is an undeniable world where Zach Eady is still the unstoppable force he was in college in the NBA. It's not likely, but there is absolutely a chance that that happens. And if that did happen, even if it was only for a few years, like that is the high, like, I don't know how we can say that's not the highest ceiling. He had the highest ceiling in college the last two years. All these dudes are still the same players. Yes, it's a different sport. It's a different game. I get all of that. But did Zach Eady have a higher ceiling than Reed Shepard last year? He did. He had a higher ceiling than everybody who's played college basketball in 30 years. That that exists still in the NBA. What if no center can guard him in the league? That might happen. What if he lands in a spot that plays through that and chooses to treat him like a starting center instead of a bench guy? Um, I don't think it's likely, but I don't think there's anyone else in the draft that even has that. Straight up. I don't think that's crazy. Is it? Is it that crazy to say that? I mean, Shaq, yeah. Shaq wasn't part of his complaint, just the highest ceiling in the draft. Well, I, I would mean, I would argue with, like, he's had the highest ceiling of any player in the last 30 years, comma, any, as well. In college? Yeah. Well, like, I mean, uh, I guess, I, you know, I have a hard time deciphering, like, the NBA to college thing, but, like, the, he, hit the, hand, he hit the highest ceiling in college, right? In college, yes. Yeah. But, but you're saying there's another ceiling to go to in the NBA. I'm sealing his seal. His ceiling is exactly what it was in college. Just that, like, it's still putting the orange thing in the 10 foot thing, right? That hasn't changed. I get that it's a different game, but like, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm just saying the same thing I've said a thousand times this off season, but like, if you, if someone wants to debate me on this and say like, Alex Sar has a hall of fame ceiling, that's where you would disagree with me. You have to disagree that like other players have a higher ceiling. But if you're just saying like there is no outcome, there's a 0% outcome that Zach Eady scores like he did in college in the NBA. I don't get that at all. I don't get that. He could. He could be a dominant scorer in the NBA still. It just, it's unlikely to happen because no NBA teams want to feature a center like that right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it, that's why it's unlikely. It's just, that's not it anymore. Yeah, and no, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's likely, but like that exists. I don't know how you argue that it doesn't. There's a ceiling there. All right, that's it. Uh, I think we have one more in the Discord. Confused Illini fan says, Riley, have you ever tried a double two-hearted ale worth the try if you like your beer hoppy? That's crazy that that comment came in while we were having our Bell's Brewery discourse. I have not tried one. Definitely add it to the list of, of beers to pick up next time I'm at the store. What does a hoppy beer mean? What does that mean when people say that? Tastes like, like hops. Like it tastes like hops? Yeah. So you're supposed to know what hops taste like? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Deacon Sully a- has one final at the buzzer here. With my parents in Boston, is it time to throw Project X? No. That's it. Yeah, I'm with Carter. I don't. I don't think that's wise. We're pro responsibility. I think Sully needs some responsibility. He seems like a loose cannon right now. Yeah. Yeah. I was kind of into it, honestly. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Uh, let's get to our. No, no, no. Here. Don't throw Project X. Throw Aaron's party from Aaron Carter's Aaron's Aaron's party. <laughs> That's the Mark Pope version of like you went from a John Calipari party X to a Mark Pope Aaron's party. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good song. Okay, uh, we're gonna get to our topics here in a moment. Riley, first though, could we please hear a word from our Lord? We can. Sorry, I need to pull up my. Uh, I need to pull up the verse. I did not have it locked. Oh, well, while you pull up the verse, do you mind if we tell you about our sponsor, NBA Two K Lab? Carter, you love NBA Two K Lab. You play video games all the time, probably too much, honestly. If we're being completely transparent about it, uh, what do you like about the folks at Two K Lab, Cart? I mean, the thing I like most about it is I think we talked about earlier five tool players. It's, it's a five tool website, in my opinion. You can get everything on there. You can, you know, figure out the badges that go along with the game, which is something I very much struggle with when I'm doing my my two K player and my, you know, in the park and whatnot. There's many games on there you can play on the website, but my favorite portion of it 
selfishly is that we have our big board player rankings on there, which Riley was a part of as well, uh, next to some of the big dogs or little dogs. We're talking about ESPN and Borzello because he's small. But, uh, yeah, you can go look at our rankings up there. You can do draft simulators. It's a, it's a really cool website, really cool tool. Highly recommend checking it out. One of those things that I feel like folks might be hesitant, but once you type that into that bar at the top of your browser, whether that be Gmail or, I'm sorry, Google Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whatever it might be. Go ahead and fire that up in the URL and give it a go. You won't regret it. Firefox reference, the year of our Lord 2024 is special. Uh, the other thing I love about NBA 2K Lab, they're giving us money to talk about them on the show. That's one of my favorite things. Uh, go support them because supporting them supports us. Mm. NBA2KLab.com. You can see the big board and you can play all of their other mini games over at NBA2KLab.com. Riley, are you ready to... Speak from the Lord. I am. This comes from Psalm 37. The subtitle of this psalm is Instruction in Wisdom. And I think that sort of sets the stage for these two verses. Verses 23 through 24 says, A person's steps are established by the Lord, and he takes pleasure in his way. Though he falls, he will not be overwhelmed, because the Lord supports him with his hand. All my sleepers out there, just know that the, the Lord offers you his helping hand. So, sleepers, you have been awakened. That was nice. Okay, to the topics. What do we got, sir? So this week, for topic number one, we are once again utilizing Jeff Borzello's way too early top 25. And we're going to look at the top 15 teams and highlight one thing, maybe two, if we're feeling especially spicy on a certain team, one to two things that this team needs to do or needs to have happen to win a national title. Ooh. I tried to go through the top 25, and once I got past 15, I was like, there's maybe one or two of these teams who could contend for a title, in my opinion, so we cut it off at 15. Hmm, okay. It's extremely wonder... fun. Extremely, okay. extremely fun. And oh. like like Carter did with X-Factors, I want to start from the bottom and count up. Start it. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, God, Riley. No way. Skate right by that, Riley. Who's number 15? I... <laughs> number number. <laughs> Number 15 is Purdue. What does Purdue need to do or need to have happen to win the national title? I think Brad Smith needs to be an All-American first team. I think he needs to be the undisputed, maybe not undisputed, but he needs to assert himself into the best guard in the country conversations right now with Mark Sears and R.J. Davis. But I think to win a national title, though, he needs to be that guy. He needs to be that level guy. He needs to be a first team All American. He needs to be damn near almost national player of the year. Congregation say amen, first of all. Uh, second of all, I'd like to pull rank and twist this topic into a new tweak for this. We actually all have to say a thing and we can't take the other person's thing because, in reality, for any of these teams to win a national championship, more than one thing is going to need to happen. And we need to put mm -hmm. our collective brains together on this because that was the obvious one. Braden Smith needs to be great. That's Carter's answer. The second thing that would need to happen in tandem with Braden Smith being great is that his backcourt mate Fletcher Lawyer needs to take a jump. I'm going to say this straight up. No dancing around it. Everybody wants the freshmen to be the, the guys who take leaps. People are saying Fletcher Lawyer is what he is. I don't think I'm okay with that. I don't think I'm okay with pointing to the guy who's been a starting shooting guard on a team that went to the national title game and won back-to-back -back Big Ten championships, hasn't lost a non-conference game in his entire career, and saying he's a finished product, he's not done. Hell no. This is the dude who tormented Tennessee. This dude is capable of significantly more. If Braden Smith needs to take a leap post Zach Eady, so does Fletcher Lawyer. I need more than 10 a game out, out of him. I need him to be like a 15 a game guy and them to truly step into Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy level as a backcourt together. I like that. I like the Ty like Jerome, Kyle Guy shout too. Like that. Thank you. Yeah, mine actually was Trey Kaufman Wren. Played just 17 minutes a game last year, was Somewhat efficient, mostly efficient, had stretches where he looked really good. If you stretch that, let's say, 17 minutes a game to 25 to 28 minutes a game, can his point total, like, can he he go from being a six-point-per-game score to being a, let's say, 13-point-per-game score, maybe give you seven boards, shoot, 
like 33% from three making, I don't know, 20 to 30 on the season um, because they're going to need some sort of production from the front court. And I still, I think TKR has got to be the the go-to guy despite the Daniel Jacobson hype. Totally agree. Love it. Okay. This is already fun. This is one of my favorite topics we've ever done. What's 14? 14, we have Creighton. So do we change the order on who goes? Because like, I don't want, like, how do we do it? Ooh, you want to make it more challenging for you. I like that. Yeah, well, like, I went first last time, but do I go first every time? I think we let Riley steer. Riley tells us who goes first. Yeah, Greg, you can go first on this one. We'll just rotate. So I'll go second, Carter goes third. Okay, the most critical thing by far for Creighton is that Pop Isaacs needs to be nasty. And you can define nasty however you want to. But uh, I think he probably needs to be like better than Trey Alexander nasty because there is no Baylor Shireman on this team. Steven Ashworth might be better or might be good, but uh, you're basically trying to replace both Alexander and Shireman's studness with one guy who has been the best player at Texas Tech, but he's a high volume dude. He needs to be like a true all American level player, I think, for Creighton to be as good as national championship good. I'm going to go with Mason Miller, and I know that probably hurts Carter and I get to talk about him, but uh, Creighton hasn't really gotten anything from their foreman, like, what, since Ryan Hawkins was there? Was that two years ago? Um, they and I, Like, Greg hit the nail on the head as far as saying they they need that scoring pop in, in lieu of Baylor Shireman being there. I don't think pop can do it on its own. That's where it's got to be Mason Miller, maybe Jemiah Neal, one of those two two dudes. So mine's in conjunction with your guys because of this. I'm not, I, I need to replace that production, right? And instead of trying to ask those guys to do it, I think there needs to be somewhat of shift, a shift in Creighton basketball. Like, I think it needs to be completely on, like you just ride call till, till the, the absolute wheels fall off. Like he averaged 17 last year, but I think there was games where like, obviously other guys are going, so he didn't get touches. I think like they need to do, Zach Eady like usage with Kalk and just like rock out with that. And I think he's good enough. He's skilled enough uh, to have even larger numbers than he had this past season. I love that cart. So let's go on to number 13, Tennessee volunteers. Uh, mm. I got to start with this one. Yeah, go ahead. I think Darlin Stone, Dubar, and Chaz Lanier collectively need to be 90% of Dalton Connect. They need that for them to win a title. Like if they didn't win it with Connect, didn't get to the final four, I just don't think like that the just being defensive minded with one bucket getter. <laughs> I think the formula could work. It could have broken differently and they made it to the championship game or something. But yeah, they they need Dubar and Lanier to be legit, legit. Hmm. I'm not sure where I'm going to go with this one, to be honest with you. I can go if you uh, want more time. Yeah, go ahead. All right, I'm going to spin this on its head a little bit. They need to not even try to replace Dalton Connect. They need to forget that Dalton Connect existed. Um, Because the reality is, even if Dubar's great, even if Lanier is great, even if as a tandem, like you said, the production needs to be 90%. I agree with that. If they try and do the same model where it's like we have one superstar score and everybody else just guards and is a role player, it's going to fail. That worked because Dalton Connect was super special. The reality is not that Tennessee like reached some level they've never reached. Tennessee basketball has been great for a bunch of years. They had Grant Williams. They had Admiral Schofield. They had Kennedy Chandler. They have had good teams, even if the March runs haven't happened. You need to just go back to being good again and get more shots at this. Build your team around who you actually have. Zakai Ziegler's a, a leader. He needs to take a step forward. You got new faces in the front court and on the wings. But if they try and just say, like, you're our du or, or Dubar, you're our Dalton Connect, I think it fails miserably. I think... Rick Barnes won't do that, quite frankly, and they'll be pretty good. Mm. Uh, I think for this team to win a championship, and this might be, I think a lot of people would agree with me, but I think there needs to be a Zakai Ziegler step back. 
I want Zakai Ziegler to operate like Dewan Harris more. And I that sounds crazy because we'll come on here all the time. Like we want Dewan Harris to be more aggressive. Mm-hmm. And I think there needs to be like a I want a middle of what Ziegler does right now and what Dewan Harris does. And I think if Ziegler does that, it'll work out better instead of trying to kind of like just make him this high, like because he's a high level point guard, but I don't necessarily think he needs to be like high usage and like you're looking for him to be the guy to get you shots. Yeah, I like that one a lot too. Good, good start to this. We can move on to Texas A and M number twelve. So, Carter, you're starting this one. Uh, hmm. Wade Taylor needs to shoot forty percent. <laughs> Just forty. Just, that's it. Just forty. He shoots forty yeah. percent. That's and they'll have a chance because he's the type of guard that can get to the tournament and single handedly score enough. For his team to make a run, and you and we look back, we're like, damn, I can't believe that Texas A and M seven seed team made a run because Wade Taylor went nuclear in the tournament. Riley, I want you to go second here because I have an answer I'd like to give for this, but if you don't mention a certain player, I'm going to pivot. Yeah, mine is Manny Obasaki. I think he needs to be the clear cut like. 1B to Taylor's 1A is probably a bridge too far, but the clear-cut number two where it's like, Wade, you can rock out, you can take your shots, but on those nights where you don't have it to keep you shooting 40%, we're going to turn it over to Manny and make sure he gets his touches. I thought he was so good for them down the stretch of last year. I love his the size, athleticism, and like handle combination. Uh, yeah, I want to see him take one more step further and get to that all-SEC caliber player, and they need it for to contend for a national title. All right, that's fair. Uh, my joke answer I wanted to give was they need a pandemic to hit because they need every other serious title caliber program to like have mass sicknesses for this to be even a possible outcome. Um, my nice answer or player specific answer is they need Pharrell Payne to be the best big in the SEC. Uh, I think that's possible. I love Pharrell Payne. I think he was kind of wasting away at Minnesota. And it's one of the more underrated great fit transfers there is because he is so physical and so good, relentless on the boards. You put him in that system. I think he's going to be way better than Coleman. Um, I think he'll, he'll be the star in that front court. It's just how good is he actually Wade Taylor needs help, man. He's not winning this title by himself. If it becomes Wade Taylor and Payne, I could buy them being a top five team. Like that shout a lot too. He does fit in with all the offensive rebounding that like Buzz Williams has really made a name for himself with over the the past couple of years. Moving on to Auburn at number 11. Is it my turn to kick off? Or is it Greg? I think it's Greg. Greg, it's you. Do whatever you want, sir. This is your show. (laughs) You started off, Greg, for Auburn. Okay. Uh, They need Janai Broom. I'm going to keep it simple. They need Janai Broom to be the no doubt best player in the country. I think he's capable of that. I don't think there's any world where the typical Bruce Pearl team does anything other than the typical Bruce Pearl team, like good regular season, two or three seed, win a couple tournament games and lose. If Janai Broom stays just like the very good player that he is. And to be completely honest with you, you go back to that Yale game. Yale tried to give that game away in a variety Mm -hmm. of ways down the stretch. And I kept waiting for the moment where Janai Broom was just going to be unstoppable and win the game for them. He didn't do it. He's great. He needs to be greater than great. Mm. Yeah, I was I was thinking of the free throws in particular down the stretch. Um, so I like that. I like that shout a lot. But I'm gonna go with my guy Miles Kelly. They got to rein in his shot selection. It was not good at Georgia Tech last year. You could blame that on, on playing for a team without really many shot creators around him. But the last thing you want is for Miles Kelly to be like a six seven KD Johnson. I, there's a world where you can maximize his ball handling and he's had good shooting seasons before you got to find a way to get that version of miles kelly um because i think he for this team to reach its potential i think he needs to be the best guard as opposed to piglise miles kelly kyle stand up uh this one is easy for me and it has nothing to do with players it's bruce pearl i'm sick of this 24 26 minute a game bs with these players play your guys play your dogs 30 minutes a game i'm sick of this why did janai broom play 27 minutes a game last season like I, I get this platoon BS out of here. Pick your five to six best guys, seven if you really want to get there, and play your dogs. Massive minutes. Cart, I adore this answer from you. I, I love, too. I love that answer. I think that's the correct answer. 
It also transitions very nicely to a coach who will play his starters big minutes. Shout out to my guy, Hubert Davis. And at number 10, North Carolina Tar Heels. Mm. I will kick us off because it's my turn. And they just need a five man to be good, like serviceable to good. Um, I think they're going to have enough perimeter pop, enough scoring from the guards and the wings. I just want one of Zayden High, Jalen Washington. You can throw Lubin in there if you want. Maybe even give Jalen Withers a little bit of love. One of those dudes to block shots, catch lobs, and grab boards. Okay. They don't have to be a star. You don't have to play through them. Just just be serviceable in a role. Okay. Moving on to heart. Got it. Asking guys who have not been serviceable to be serviceable. Got it. Um, I'm messing with you. I, <laughs> Greg's rubbing off on me. Um, I mentioned this in the X Factor one, but I'm a I'm a I'm a recycle my answer. If if uh, Ian Jackson, Ian is it Ian or Ian? I always mess it up. It's you Ian. know, Riley. It's Ian. Ian. Mm-hmm. If Ian Jackson is elite, <laughs> why do you mess that up? It's the name Ian. Ian Eagle. Ian. There's, there's precedent for this. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> the, ra- the rapper, the rapper Ian. Just dro- driving like a, I always mess that up is crazy. His name's Ian. I do. <laughs> I do. But in any in any regard, he needs to be special because mm-hmm. if he's special and Cadeau takes a jump that I think he's going to take, then I don't care if it's four on five. If I can get Cadeau, Davis, Jackson, and Tyson to just all be special that I don't even see the five man until it, until it ends in an elite eight loss then I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with the thing that you both used as qualifiers before you even got to your thing there. It, there's no chance UNC sees anything. If Elliot Cadeau doesn't take the jump, like even in Carter's little world right there where we need this to happen. He prefaced it by saying, and also if Cadeau does this, Cadeau has to be not just good, but like great. If Mm -hmm. North Carolina is going to be taken seriously this year, last year, he could just be like passable because Harrison Ingram was really good. And because you had Armando Baycott and because Cormac Ryan was really special at times and moments, none of these dudes are proven anymore. Nobody's proven on this team, right? Like literally other than Van Allen and RJ, I don't think you can make an argument that there's any player on this team that we know is a good college basketball player. So uh, maybe Cade Tyson, I guess, but there's big competition caveats there. They need Cadeau to not just be passable and not even just be good. It needs to be like superstar breakout, him and RJ together. And there's a lot of tweaks that have to happen to his game for that to happen. But it could. You guys are trying to sell me that it will. But we can't even have a serious UNC conversation if that does not happen first. I'll give that to you, Greg. We'll move on to number nine, Arizona. Greg, get us started here. Caleb Love shots need to go in. For, and, and not for the season not, nothing in the season matters he just he needs three weeks where he shoots like he did in Carolina Blue and nothing else on the team is relevant I'm looking more at the wings I don't hate that I don't I don't hate that answer I don't know I like there's just so much volatility you don't know what you're going to get with Caleb Love I want the wings to be able to carry the load a little bit more if given a chance whether that's Del Orso whether that's KJ Lewis and then moving into the front court with Trey Townsend um I think Del Orso sort of needs to be either he or Lewis needs to be that Pella Larson type and hopefully with a little bit more scoring juice to them if they want to win a title I'm gonna say the underclassmen KJ Lewis the freshman Carter Bryant who I really like I love Carter uh, Bryant Previous, like the underclassmen, I think need to need to step up because Pell, like like Greg kind of said, or maybe it was Riley, like Pell Larson was so massive to this team, and and so was Kashad Johnson, and I think Trey Townsend is gonna be great at the four spot, but you need somebody at the three, someone at the center position to pick up what you know Balo and Larson left with this team, and it, mm-hmm. it falls on the shoulders of those underclassmen and, and freshmen like Carter Bryant. Yeah, that's even mentioning like losing Kashad Johnson and Ballo are huge losses, even if you like that transfer class. So I think the underclassmen covers they lost, all of that. They lost four starters. Yeah, that's tough. Four reloaded, but needed to hit. So uh move on to number eight with Duke. Back to you, Carter. The the young bulls, 
got to be allowed to rock. They got to rock. The, the young bulls have to rock. <laughs> I, so I can that be two things? I think it's the young bulls have to be allowed to rock, and then they also have to rock. That's two things, <laughs> right? Like yeah, one of those is like on Shire, and one of those is on the young bulls. So, so mine is the young bulls got to rock. Yours is the young bulls have to be allowed to have rock. to be allowed to rock. Yeah, yep. if, if it happens in tandem, they're nasty. <laughs> I'm going to stray away from the young bulls and say Tyrese Proctor needs to have that breakout that we thought he'd have last year. Cause if you get inconsistent Tyrese Proctor, I don't care how good Cooper flag is. It's not going to lead to a national title. Interesting. Interesting. Is this you trying to spin the narrative that Duke is not team young bull because you love the, young I'm scared bulls of the, the young bulls. Do. Yeah, maybe it might be. Yes. <laughs> Keep Darren Harris and con canoople on the bench, please. R- um, Riley, how much, how much does it hurt you in your heart that uh, like every year we have a let the young bulls rock team. And this year that team is Duke for us. Yeah. It's not going to be, if y'all start becoming like hashtag brotherhood boys, I Maynard can take my spot. If Duke is good, <laughs> if they suck, then yes, I'll be here every Friday. But if Duke is number three or higher in the country, Congrats, I Maynard. You're getting called up from the Discord, and I'm going down to the G League again. Let's move on to Iowa State, number seven. Um, is it back to me? Just or, sorry, I'm losing count of this. Uh, I think... no, I think it's my turn actually. Okay, go ahead, Cart. Uh, I need Montilovich to be a lottery pick. If Montilovich is a lottery pick with everything else, I think that 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 gives this team national champion. They need there needs to be an NBA player on this team. Like, well, Greg and I did the exercise, I think, last year where we're like, does this team have an NBA player? Monchilovich needs to be an NBA player, and I think that puts them in the national championship conversation. Mm-hmm. They need one. Yeah, I uh, I actually completely agree with Cart here. Um, just to be a little different, I think some of the new guys need to be more key pieces than people think they need to be. Like, I think a lot of people think a team that has Tame and Lipsy – and Gilbert and Momchilovich is going to be fine, and you don't really need much. My pushback would be if that's still the team build, this team can't win a national championship. Like that, the, to me, the upside isn't there with that top three. They almost need one of the front court pieces that is new that is mm-hmm. added to this team to break out and surprise everybody. My pick for that would be Joshua Jefferson. I really like him, and I think it's a good fit. Um, but yeah, I think I think that needs to happen. Joshua Jefferson was going to be my pick, so I'm going to turn my, my attention to Caden Fish coming off the bench. I don't know nothing, nothing about this guy, but his name is Caden Fish, and I'm looking at the roster sheets right now, and so I need Caden to emerge as a really good six man. Um, so let's move on to Baylor, and I'm going to kick us off for the Bears and just say defense 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 they need someone to emerge as like either a wing stopper or even an interior presence omir's one knock is he's a been a really bad post defender throughout his career jeremy roach was never a positive defender for duke either um so yeah i don't care where if it comes from the wing if it comes from the interior they need someone to set the tone on that end of the floor i like that my my pushback, my answer is a pushback on Riley. Uh, let's just abandon it. Let's not let's not find somebody. Let's go full. We're an offensive team. Let's go full Illinois. Let's go full like score more than us. And the, those just, teams can't win though. We're talking win a national title. Like I I know you love that bit, but those teams straight up cannot win the title, right? I guess not. I'm, I'm in the La La Land world that I live in. They can, but I guess not. So that's not a that's not a susceptible answer. Uh, I'm gonna say that Norchad has to be. No, nah, Norchad's got to be the best big in the Big Twelve if they want to win a national title. I love that answer. I think that's the right answer. Uh, am I? Did I miss something? Did neither of you guys mention VJ Edgecombe in a big way yet? I was, was going to give it to you. Yeah, I, was gonna you okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't crazy on that. V, like, okay. Whew, buckle up. I think if Baylor wins a national championship, VJ Edgecombe is one of the three best players in college basketball. And like, three best. yeah. And like, there's, there's a serious conversation at the end of this. That's like, should VJ go first overall? Like he's, he's just that transcendently good. 
Uh, okay, like, like not, not, lot. yeah, not like Jacoby Walter, Keontae George, good. Like, mm-hmm. holy shit, this is his team. Jeremy Roach, go to the side. And I think it could happen because I love EJ. Yeah, love great it. pick. Moving into the top five, we have Gonzaga. Uh, Greg, the floor is yours. Ah. Uh... You know what? This might be enlightening for me. The most important thing to me for Gonzaga is that they stay healthy. I think this team can win a national championship without anything crazy happening. They just need to have their full pieces. It's a really high floor team. I I love the pieces. I, I kind of had that same realization, but Cart, you got anything? Mine's a little hot takey, but I believe it in my heart of hearts. I think the keys need to give be given to Nolan Hickman as the point guard. Wow. Oh, kind of surprised on that one. How long do we have to wait for like the Nemhard to actually get to the point where like he does the Nemhard thing? It's a good question. <laughs> Eventually that name's gonna wear out a little bit, right? No. All okay. right. My my pushback to that would be like Nolan Hickman's been a breakout candidate for three years running now. He's he is taking the mantle from Reese Beekman as the uh, breakout. Al- allow guy. him to do it though. <laughs> Allow him to do it. He was a 14 point per game scorer last season. He did play well. Yeah, that's true. Nemhard, Nemhard kind of killed him in games they lost. He turned the ball over. Like, I don't know. Like, you have guys like Khalif Battle off the bench. Like, I don't know. There, uh, maybe Hickman having a higher ball usage might help. And I know Gonzaga fans are going to eat me alive, but my there's, a, uh, there's a diabolical answer here. If you wanted to make the spin zone, that this team can't win a national title as currently constructed because you don't believe in Nemhard or Nolan Hickman, like we just talked about. The spin would be you need one of them to somehow be unable to play, and Braden Smith's red shirt comes off. And Braden Smith is a ceiling raiser in a way that neither Hickman or Nemhard would be. I yeah. think that's possible, but yeah. like that's a diabolical answer. It is diabolical. Um, my answer for the record was just someone ascending to a star level potential, whether that's a Jai, whether that's EK. I penciled in Nimhard. Maybe I should consider Hickman as well. Um, just because it's like all – there are some is greater than the total of its parts, whatever that phrase is. But I would like to see one of these guys become that Corey Kispert, Rui Hachimura, uh, take your pick, like whatever – like big time Gonzaga score over the past few years you can think of. Um, I guess Drew Timmy and, and Graham EK's case, uh, like that type of player to get them over the uh, over the hump. So let's uh moving on to number four, Houston. I'll start with this one. Milos Uzan needs to be freshman year Milos Uzan, where it was like he's making shots, he's a true point guard, has a ton of potential, as opposed to the one who regressed last year and couldn't really make shots. That's that's an obvious answer on that one. I feel like mine. Mm, one of the other bigs outside of Roberts, I think, needs to break out a little bit. Whether it be Francis Tugler, I like Tugler to be that guy. I love um, Tugler, but I think one of those guys needs to step up. I feel good about Uzan, Cryer, Sharp, and even just Roberts being Roberts. I need one more guy. G whiz. I'm struggling with this one because my gut answer at first was they need some tourney luck. Mm. They need some tourney luck. Be- the same way we talked about Illinois, like it's not anything they're doing wrong necessarily. Mm. They just need a break, like a good draw. But I think Houston has had some decent breaks. Like I, I liked their region this last year. It was pretty open. And then they had the shed injury, but like, I don't know. It just feels like they just need to keep performing. They've been top two in Ken Palm for four years in a row. So like, just keep doing that and keep taking stabs at the dice roll. That is the tournament. Um, So that's my answer. I don't think there's any crazy thing for players. It's just get some tourney luck on your side. Yeah. Yeah. Not a whole lot. I mean, just based on what's been going right for them so far. Speaking of a team, look at me with these transitions, a team that everything has gone right for the past two years, the Yukon Huskies. Wow, what a transition for you. I'll, I'll let Greg go first on this one. You're pointing me where I, I want to go, I guess. Uh, I need to be right about Aiden Mahaney. I need to be correct. I think I am correct. 
Uh, reminder, the last time I was this bold about a transfer player, it was Taron Shannon Jr., and I nailed it. And I was called crazy, and he was awesome. So uh, I don't exactly hope that Aiden Mahaney has the word-for-word script of Taron Shannon Jr.'s last two years, but uh, I think he could be an All-American. I truly do. And Dan Hurley's talking like he's going to be their best player, which is important to me. Because if he didn't view him that way, he'd be talking about other guys I think this is going to be the Mahaney show, and I think it's going to work. Carter, you got one? Oh, duh, duh, duh. I think their best chance of winning a title, even though there's a great chance on this, is that Hassan Diara can remain like the backup point guard bench guy. And like maybe a freshman like Ahmad Noel is just that dynamic and that good. And he steps up in that role. Um, and I guess it'd be a two-part question. Like, if there's something that could keep Hassan Diara and Samson Johnson in their last year's role, that would greatly help them win a championship. Like, if Tara steps up, or mm-hmm. if, like I said, another point guard steps up, whether it be him, Solomon Ball, uh, and just keep those two guys in the role they were in last year, I think that, was, that would do wonders for their championship aspirations. Yeah, Solo Ball was my pick, and I don't think you talked about him enough to take it away from me. I personally believe he has the second most NBA potential on the team after McNeely. His flashes were so good last year. He was really uh, exceptional in the non-conference, was making three, showing off his athleticism, and I would like to see him and Aiden Mahaney be the backcourt. That's the starting backcourt. You keep Hassan Diara coming off the bench as that steadying hand. Um, Let Solo rock out a little. I like that shout. Me too. Yeah. All right, let's do Alabama. Um, my turn again to kick it off. Someone other than Cliff has to play defense. I think that's the only thing. I'm really high on this Alabama team. I think their roster is awesome. But that is my my only concern is that, like, is this just going to be kind of a repeat of last year's top 15-ish team when all is said and done, just with a little more shot blocking? Mine is mine's that Cliff actually has to be good. <laughs> like we need to figure out like Cliff's actually good or if he's a Rutgers merchant. Oh, I'm kind of in between a few things here. Um, so my initial gut was that Grant Nelson needs to be better than he was last year. Like I think Grant Nelson was playing well at the end of the season, and that's part of why they made a run in March. But for much of the season, I was kind of unimpressed. Like if you compare Nelson to like Shireman. I think Baylor was a lot better at Creighton right away than Grant Nelson was at Bama. And Shireman year two, I think, got even better for Creighton. You probably need some sort of leap from Grant Nelson to be taken seriously. But the more important answer for me would actually be the role guys. Like, you know, Sears, Nelson, and Cliff are going to be title good. Losing Rylan Griffin to another team that can win the title is massive to me. Aiden Holloway stunk. Aiden Holloway was a huge part of why Auburn wasn't good last year. Everyone seems to think Reitzel's a guaranteed breakout guy. Darian Reed's talented. Sherelle's talented. But, like, I just I, – I do question who's around the big three, and they need at least two of those guys to be legitimately Rylan Griffin level or better. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that one as well, Greg. Like, the, the ancillary pieces, even you can mention, like, a, a Houston Millette or Chris Youngblood – all stepping up a level in competition. So as we're saying these names straight up, this is why I'm lower on Alabama than you guys. Like I, I don't view the supporting cast as a title worthy supporting cast. I just don't. I'm I'm very yeah. questionable on these guys outside of Sears, Nelson and Cliff. I mean, I think that's, I think that's fair. So that'll get us to number one, Kansas. Mm. Health. Like, literally just stay healthy. Yeah. That, that, that's a cop-out answer. So, I'll go with this. Um, I think in order for them to win a national title, AJ Store has to be the – actually, no. No, 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 no. Hunter Dickinson has to be the best player. Hunter Dickinson needs to be the best player on this team for it to be a championship team. I think it's better if AJ store is Robin and Hunter Dickinson is Batman. Mm -hmm. I would like to tweak that. And I know I'm not allowed to take the same answer, but I was in on Hunter and I thought you were going store. Uh, The one and only most important thing for Kansas 
no doubt is Hunter Dickinson becomes the national player of the year. Like it's not just best player on the team anymore. This is like, he will decide where this team goes and it hasn't always been the case. Uh, I have talked about it a bunch of times. The one time that Hunter Dickinson had the perfect surrounding pieces around him, he was unstoppable as a true freshman. That was the worst version of Hunter. He was unstoppable. He was the best player on the team. Michigan was the third best team in the country. By the way, go back and look at it. That year, Michigan graded out like nearly as good as Gonzaga and Baylor. It was Gonzaga, Baylor, and Michigan. They all spent time at the top. And then Michigan lost in the Elite Eight in a game where they didn't have Isaiah Livers and Franz airballed a shot. Like, they were title caliber Hunter's freshman year when he had the right pieces around him. He has not had the right piece around him since. Everybody's written him off as this loser. It, it, the pieces are perfect. This is his time to shine. He needs to be Zach Eady of college basketball this year. The only thing I'll add to that is Kansas just needs to avoid a team that can kill them in ball screens in the tournament. You know, that's the big that's the big question with Hunter. Can he guard in space? Can he guard a ball screen? That Michigan team did have like an otherworldly defender with Franz covering it up. I think Ryland Griffin's a good defender, not on that level though. And that's, I feel like that's the only way you're going to beat Kansas. The few games that they will lose, will you, they'll probably just have a guard going nuclear out of ball screens or something. Yeah, completely agree. That was maybe my favorite Riley Davis segment that he's ever brought to the table. I really enjoyed that, boys. Good work. Number two. Number two, we're going back to our player rankings, and I'm going to tease this by saying I might just have y'all rank uh, players by the by the, the next 10 until the season starts. We're going to have a top 500. Uh, realistically, we'll probably cut it off after 50 when we get bored with it. But um, I gave you a little heads up on this one. Player rankings 21 through 30. Who wants to go first? So you gave me a heads up. I ignored you when you gave me the heads up, and I... The reason I ignored you is because I did not have it in me to go back and look at who was on my list last time. So I love the fact that we're doing this exercise. I'm going to be guessing the names I haven't said yet, though. And I look forward to doing that. So, Cart, please go first. That's crazy because I'm going to be doing the absolute uh, same. <laughs> Fine, I'll kick us off then. Um, as a reminder for anybody who's really <laughs> diligently taking notes – I kicked out Wade Taylor from my top 20 last week and put Janelle, John L. Davis in instead. Um, so Wade Taylor will appear on this list. 21, I had AJ Store. Wait, I'm making this an official ruling. I'm sorry. If we're doing this in the future topics, you are in charge of the consensus list, and that's the goal of the exercise. It's not okay. us just – like we need to come to the 21 through 30 together today. All right. All right, that works for me. That works for me. So my 21 was AJ Store. 22, I had Wade Taylor, 23, Tremont Mark, 24, VJ Edgecombe, 25, Umar Balo, 26, Coleman Hawkins, 27, JT Toppin, breakout season, 28, Grant Nelson, a respect pick after what he did in the tournament, 29, my favorite breakout candidate, Colin Murray Boyles, shout out CMB Hive, yet another Hive Carter and I are card carrying members of, and number 30 is Aiden Mahaney. So some of these I know were on y'all's list last week. So that'll be well. I'll get in the lab this week and re-listen to last week's segment, and I'll we will have a consensus list going forward. Okay. So I have two, maybe three issues with your list. Uh, one, Mahaney at thirty is insane. I hate you. Two, uh, Murray Boyles. I I want to believe in. I like. He got brought up in a NBA video I was doing with Ralph recently. And Ralph like really shrugged him off and was like, yeah, there's kind of some stuff to worry about here. And you're telling me I just need to trust the South Carolina alum. Almost. Well, I just, I thought like if, if he's really top 30 caliber, I feel like all South Carolina fans would be like I all know, over man. that. And instead I Ralph know. like really pushed back. I mean, it was like, ah, I don't know. And I never, I didn't really ask why, but it felt icky. What, what time Ralph says he's one. Ralph says he's one. Ralph was just having a bad one that day. You think so? Yeah. I mean, it could be um, the third one is I don't I don't like JT Toppin as a top 30 player in the country that just saying that part out loud feels wrong to me. I love JT Toppin. That dude, right. dude right. put up 12 and 10 as a freshman in the Mountain West, a decent league. He's a great yeah. athlete, has a little point, bit to 12 it. points a game in the Mountain West, top 30 in the country. <laughs> Respect my guy. No. <laughs> like, what, what do you mean? No. I mean, no. Like, 
<laughs> yeah, like I just have to immediately flip my stance on this. Does it change your mind that his Twitter name is Jay Tizzle? That is his handle. Yeah. Yup. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right. I got my 21 to 30. All right. Let's hear it, Cart. Uh, Grant Nelson, Graham EK, VJ Edgecombe, Trey Townsend, Coleman Hawkins, Umar Balo, Chaz Lanier, Jordan Pope, Matthew Morrell, and at number 30 to finish it off, Jay Nakins. Can you read through it one more time, Carter? I just want to make sure I get, get the these list notes is out. immediately invalidated. Grant Grant Nelson, Graham EK, VJ Edgecombe, Trey Townsend, Coleman Hawkins, Umar Balo, Chaz Lanier, Jordan Pope, Matthew Morrell, Jay Nakins. So you, Umar Balo's there. Mm-hmm. What Big Ten players did you have before Umar Bala? Uh, I had Braden. Um, I would think that might be it. Who else have you had? Dylan Harper? Uh, Dylan Harper. Yeah, Dylan Harper, top 10. Malik Renew. You had Renew on this list before Umar Bala? I think no, I did. I don't, I don't think Renew was on it yet. I don't think oh, you said it. You've, you've uh, always doubled down on Malik being better. but Well, then I'm taking out Bala for Renew then. So you're you're now putting Balo lower than Jade Nakins instead of just I'm putting I'm spot. putting Balo at number twenty nine and I'm taking out Matthew Morell all together. So it's Malik Renu, Jordan Pope, Umar Balo, Jay Nakins. So just to be clear, five seconds ago you had Matthew Morell being better than Jade Nakins, and now you have him being worse than Jade Nakins. Yep. Okay. Uh, so you have Jade Nakins, if my math is correct here. Braden Smith, Dylan Harper, Malik Renu, Umar Balo. You have Jade Nakins as the fifth best player in the Big Ten. Yep. You have him as a first team All Big Ten guy. Yep. Okay. No additional uh, inquisition. I feel like I'm I have card on trial right now. Back to you, Riley. Thank you, Greg. Would you like to give your rankings or weigh in anymore? Honestly, I just want to nitpick on your guys' rankings. Um, that's way more fun. I like because there were a lot of different players on the list cart just gave me versus yours. Like, how would you how would you two try and combine those two lists? Okay. Did we put a great uh, score on any of our lists? I don't think so. The... Store was I think y'all had store higher last week. Um store not being top twenty is crazy. All right, I can we can for the official list we can move Tame and Lipsy into this category. I was the only one who had him in uh, eleven through twenty. Um, I believe we had LJ Cryer. I think we had Omir. Came to a consensus with that. Looking from last week, do you want to kick out Wade Taylor? Is does he worthy of a top thirty? I think he should be there. Yeah, yeah, I think he should be there. Yeah. What about? I think we're only going to get one representation from Tremont Mark and Jordan Pope. Which one uh, are we going Tremont with? Then. All right, so let's so let's do Mark. Um, well, you didn't vote, so this is your own fault, fair, Greg. You, you can you can opt for him to be in thirty-one through forty. I'm just here uh, to. Admit. What about we both had Coleman, both had VJ. Did both you have Trey G- Townsend. I did not have Townsend. Should we kick out CMB for Townsend? Yeah, either him or JT Toppin for Townsend. I'll, we can go Townsend over CMB. I'll give that up. Okay. What about Renew versus Toppin? Renew. Neither of those two. Umar Balo is better, and everyone nationally agrees. This is okay. Just, yeah, we, hard, I, hard, I, I'm keep, trade for Renew. <laughs> I'm keeping Balo there, but Balo. Okay, um, I'm gonna need to get into lab each week this to make it. Work. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both okay. Here's a question. Graham E.K. versus J.T. Toppin. I kind of think, even though I voted for Toppin, That's I might. Not a, no, it's Graham E.K. Yeah, E.K. is over Toppin. Toppin. Also, I know I'm going. No, hold on a second. Hold on a second. The double-double. You're, you're trying to tell me 12 and 10 in the Mountain West matters. Look up Umar Balo's numbers. He's because he's a Caleb Love merchant. A lot of misses. How many of those are offensive rebounds? You want to talk about who the New Mexico guards were? They missed a lot of shots last year. Good point. <laughs> okay. I actually think I might have better. a better. Renew is better. Renew is not better. Yes, he is. He's not making $2 million. Should. He should. Well, 
He's not. All right. Uh, it, not to go full is... Andy Katz, but uh, Brooks Barnheiser is better than all these dudes. <laughs> we can. Uh, we're not. Barnheiser will have to sneak in next week. Vote, and you 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 won't have to deal with this. I have our consensus list, by the way. Okay, let's hear the list. Right. Make sure I can right. attach my name to this. Also, when we do, because it's like in. I think July or August, I have like the whole off season mapped out for a whole month. I wanted to do a countdown of our top 200 players in college basketball. So Riley, we're going to use this as a baseline when we get, there. let's go. All right. 21. We have Ryan Nimhard who he, he got demoted. AJ store got raised into the top 20. Uh, number 22, Wade Taylor, number 23, Tremont Mark, number 24, VJ Edgecombe, Number 25, Umar Balo. Number 26, Graham E.K. Number 27, Coleman Hawkins. Number 28, Trey Townsend. Number 29, Grant Nelson. Number 30, Chaz Lanier. Feels good to me. I think that's a good start. Okay. Let's go. Free Brooks Barnheiser. <laughs> Topic number three, let's talk about Riley's rival. Topic number three, everybody's favorite weekly segment it's summer workout video breakdowns yes we have three heavy hitters this week to discuss the duke blue devils the alabama crimson tide and spartan dog wolf wolf michigan state let's kick it off with duke and i know there was a a question from this in the discord about common mala watch and how he's looking in these workouts um, this is going to be some serious hater energy. Let me get the, let me get my pot shots in now because I think Duke's going to be really good. I don't want to watch just workout videos of Cooper flag and common model watch and even Mason Gillis, just like driving against managers with, with like the pads that they're smacking them with and then shooting open jumpers. Like, let's see some real footage. That was my big takeaway from this. Like, yes, common model watch looks very bouncy and explosive as he's like just rattling off these uncontested dunks, but it's time to grow up a little bit. Duke social media team. I will give them this. They're usually elite. Like we need some practice footage. Mm. 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 Yeah. That's big hater energy. This Duke is might be the best team in the country. You're screwed too, Riley. You're, you're, <laughs> you're big. Screwed. You are. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, I know. I know. We're going to have to figure it out, but like, <laughs> He said, uh, I know. I, uh, Malibu, I, I'm ready for it. I'm expecting dude it. Dude looks incredible. Cooper Flag was like Cooper Flag. Cooper Flag also number two. Uh, Zion James is like basically Zion in shape, uh, it looks like. Uh, Crazy. Just, just, just physically, just physically. Nothing else basketball wise. Um, it, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're just, yeah, it's, it's bad, Riley. That was a really good video. That was a really, really good video. I don't like how good Mason Gillis looks in number 18. I tweeted that 18 is the most RLS basketball number you can find, and Mason Gillis actually looks pretty good rocking number 18. That scares me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not the most concerning number to you. Cooper Flag wearing two. I talked about this on yesterday's uh, on a short. Riley, he looks great in two. There's some number issues here for you. They have a one, two, three, and five that are all likely going to start for them. That's that's problematic. Who wears number four? Do they have a, no four? Is Reddick? It's retired. Yeah, they don't have a four, which is unfortunate. Scion's fourteen. He wanted four. You could tell. So it's retired. That makes it okay. So it worked because if it's not retired and not used, then it doesn't work. But if it's now that it's retired, Malik Brown is number six, and he could start too. Oh. I love six Malik Brown rocking the LeBron number six is it's kind of scary. This is bad. Duke might be the winner so far of summer media videos. I'm not going to go that far. They like, come on. It, they were, they weren't playing anybody in it. They weren't at they, least were, give me that. They were taking off from outside the lane against pads. I don't care. <laughs> Cooper Flag was jumping from the logo. Was he though? Kind of. I thought Malawatch's dunks were a little more impressive. I mean, he is 7'2", so it checks out, but... You guys got to get it together. Can yeah. we move on to Alabama? Did y'all watch the Alabama video? Uh, is it the one with Cliff? No, the video I saw like hardly had any Cliff in it. Oh, okay. I'm looking it was, at the video they the, dedicated to Cliff. This was a video they put out. I'm pretty sure it was yesterday. It was like the Mark Sears show, and Cliff, you barely saw Cliff's number 11. That was like concerning to me. 
Did I watch oh, yeah, the cliff one? the cliff one that I saw is separate. I haven't seen the non cliff one. Either have I. Is it on their Alabama Twitter page? Yeah, I'll send it to y'all. Let me see. I Can swear. This? Oh, they just put out a Clifford the Big Crimson Dog. That's that was six days at. ago. Hold on. There's definitely oh, one that I watched. Unless they took it down already. I hate the Big Crimson Dog. One, oh no! Did did they did they delete something from the off season, boys? Tweet no, leaders? it's slam like slam university retweeted it or they reposted it and it it's, might, it's it deleted. slam still has it if you want to watch all right i'm heading over to slam university to get a, oh here we go alabama getting some work in with new familiar faces you get in that you get an aiden holloway jump shot made oh, the, like the, the video is from seconds. june 6th that's why oh i miss this this was on me tap my chest for for missing this montage last week Mark Sears no. looks smaller. He, uh, uh, what I'm getting out of this between this and the, and the the Cliff video, Aiden Holloway looks nasty. Yeah, Aiden Holloway does look nasty. Aiden Holloway might be the one. Yeah. All right, here's my official. Here's my official takeaway from this. Greg might be right. The supporting cast isn't what it's cracked up to be. Yeah, I didn't get enough. I, I they know. they didn't really spotlight Youngblood. They didn't really spotlight Millet. Spotlight Millet. I don't know if yeah, it, yeah, a little bit of Jaron Stevenson. I just see a lot of like replacement level role player types around. Like, it, how good are Sears, Nelson, and Cliff going to be? You know, yeah. And I hate I hate the Clifford, the big crimson dog, whatever that is. That's awful. Uh, this gets a D plus from me. For just say red. Just say red. Like go full in on. I don't get it. Um, what's oh, what's it, they get by knocked? Eight. They get knocked for this one because the one they did last year, it was like a Grant Nelson dunk yeah, highlight montage special. at practice, was sick. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Um, let's close. Let's close it down by talking about Michigan State's video. Jay Nakins looks strong. And he had braids. I like the whole everything about it was a very aesthetically pleasing video. Um, that little shot they had of the moments of work for a lifetime of memories, pretty sick. This is for me as someone who, you know, not a Midwesterner, didn't wasn't really exposed to Michigan or Michigan State in my early, my early formative years. I see how that green and white is compelling. It's a great color combination. The practice facility was looking great. There's a lot of good FaceTime of Frankie Fiddler in this video. Like this gets an A for me from the social team. Mm. It's a good video. Was it Greg? It was a good video, yeah. It was a good video. I will say the moment that actually stuck out to me the most, uh, it took me a while to figure out. Uh, Jace Richardson made himself a nice little dry pass kick to the corner to Trey Holloman, which I really liked. That was that really was nice, really good. Really good pass. Um there are reports that Jesse McCullough is now 6'11. I will confirm those soon. He looks big. Tell from the video, he looks, he looks, but he big. looks bigger than he, he looks bigger than he usually did. I did a big um, double take when he came on. I was like, who's that? Where where did they get an actual center? He looks he looks big. He looks good. Yeah. Zapala yeah. is goofy. Am I Zapala am, is goofy? <laughs> we got a big goofy Zapala like smile. Big, big, this big goof, this, man. This, like My the feather God. in the cap. The big goof, dog. He's coming. I, see, you say it in an endearing way right now. It reminds me of how people used to talk about Coop a couple summers ago. And, oh, it's cute. We took the guy from IMG's B team. Cute. Uh, goof troop. Goof yeah. troop. You got you to gotta laugh to prevent from crying. He looks like Frankenstein, honestly. I'm working something up on that. Um, can I speak from the heart, Cart? Is that I don't want to burn bridges. It's only 1 p.m. on a Thursday, and I want you and I to be on good terms the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah go ahead and speak from the heart. Okay. Uh, so first off – it. The green and white, want to echo that. The green and white looks fantastic. Uh, the Spartan head in general is very aesthetically pleasing. My most positive takeaway from this video for Michigan State fans is exactly what they want from this team. It's a very aesthetically pleasing team. Like, it's just a likable-looking team. Like, Jay Nakins looks awesome and cool. Jeremy Fears is an all-time aesthetic guy, just all-timer. Like, everything about Jeremy Fears is cool, including his name being Jeremy Fears. Uh, if you ignore the actual basketball part of this team, this team rocks. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I honestly did not know this was a Michigan State video at first. I got like a minute into this. And I was like, wait a second. Was that Michigan State? Because I couldn't tell 
that it was them. I didn't see any final four logos plastered all over the gym. I don't know. I'm I'm used to like July videos where the final four logo for that upcoming season is just everywhere. And it seems like Tom Izzo went away from that for some odd reason. I thought that was always the, the goal in mind. So um, I also, in an honest moment here, like real, not just trolling, don't think it's great that there was like no Xavier Booker at all. Uh, I know he was taking corner jumpers behind Cohen Carr at one point. Thought he'd be a little more involved in the basketball parts. He This guy needs to be the star. And I mean, he was nowhere to be found. It, you got more Jace Richardson and McC- like all these role player types that let's be honest, are not going to play. <laughs> and we barely got anything from the dudes that matter in your starting lineup other than Jay Nakins. That, that would horrify me if I was a Michigan state fan. I want Booker more Booker and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Also the only actual shot that was shown in this video going in without like a cut was Gary Norman. No, Frankie Fiddler had one too. Do you? I think Trey Holloman's went in. I I know we're like contractually obligated to say we believe in Frankie Fiddler, but like, Car, can you like honestly watching him like do that scoop layup? Like, do you watch him and be like, that guy's gonna be a good Big Ten player? Yeah, you do. Define good. I just like the same way we're talking. Like, fears aesthetically looks like a killer, and Aikens looks like a killer. Frankie Fiddler looks like a high schooler. Like, I just don't. I cannot imagine that dude feeding in this conference. I just can't. Get ready. It's coming. I know. I'm trying. That's that's all I have. <laughs> One big thing presented by nobody. Uh, Cart, let's have you go first today, if you don't mind. Uh, my one big thing is that at the time of listening to this, um, basically, I am full on have taken a – I've taken the – the personality of a new kitchen gadget that I have. I'm a Ninja Creamy guy officially now. Uh, my first Ninja Creamy will be consumed by the time this episode is listened to. Uh, I'm very excited about it. I have long been wanting one. Uh, and my wife got it for me for Father's Day this year. So I have a Ninja Creamy. It is currently in the freezer uh, right now getting ready. And I'll be putting it on tonight. I will be mixing in some Oreo Thins into it. I think I'm going to go for a little cookies and cream protein ice cream action. Mm. Uh, and I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be absolutely scrumptious. Mm. Ninja Cream. Yeah, that's really nice. Also a good nickname for you. If this sticks long term, Ninja Creamy could stick for you, I feel like. Sounds a wee bit racist coming from you, but sure. Well, what part of that's racist? white people use ninja instead of the actual word a lot oh i totally went over my head that's i'm very sorry of course it did everything has gone over your head it's gone over your head for a long time hair doesn't go over my head i'm losing that hey hey you look good in a hat though hey i appreciate that okay riley uh what's your one big thing that's that was so mean carter's dying (laughs) no i just i (laughs) Have y'all ever thought like y'all could be like a two person band and like the name of your band would be the foreheads or the headbutts? Greg, you got that acapella beat queued up that I asked you about? Huh? Oh no, not again. Dun, 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 dun. Mustard on the shirt, bro. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, yeah, mustard on the shirt, bro. Ham down, calling ambulance. Need a meatball, mozzarella, parmesan. What you need more cheese for? Teach Carter how to floss food all in his teeth, bro. What's up with these baloney lunches? Trying to send you to the doctor. Watch like drum and Siku, Darko, and Zapala. How many ops you really got? I mean, it's too many options. Do you pay your business lights out in your office? <laughs> That's <crazy. laughs> Read a verse on gluttony if God's watching. Sometimes you gotta pop out and go with him. Certified ice cream man, he got the he the one that got the popsicles. Walk him down to Albion, no nobody knowing him. Buzz on him, losing bets like a fifth porter, bro. Say cart, I think you need some gum. Your breath foul, and I ain't talking and one. To any restaurant that hosts them, they in love. Just make sure you hide your value buffet from them. They tell me can't 
<laughs> they tell me Kark can fit Luther's hand me downs. I don't even play golf, and I know your game is down. You can hardly drive a ball. How about you go drive around certified? Lion Man certified. As they say, wop, 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 wop. Eat another plate. Wop, 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 wop. Take my guy on a date. Why are you scrolling comments, Car? Ain't you tired? Then do like Izonita do and just retire. My word. What did I do to her? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Appreciate the beat. That's, That's insane. That's almost so insane that you think you're good. You thought you were okay. You thought I didn't see that coming. Greg, serve this, man. Them superpowers getting neutralized. We can only listen in silence. Our favorite podcast guest is acting a mess, and now he's spiraling. The boy that calls himself bluffs, he thinks it's just tough, and it's on your playlist. In reality, he a fanboy named his son after Hubert Davis, fabricating stories on a fat front because you played football in Prague. Were you on the field or just on the team? Were you making plays or the sign of the cross? You a pod doer, you are God's steward, and you got a sermon to give. You on the Noah Ark, because we're better in twos, and you let the serpents in. We make pods for good every days. You make pods for good Fridays. And we did a show from the red couch. You do shows from your guest house. This is a job for us. It's not a job for you, even if you call us your crew. But don't tell no lie about Cart, and I won't tell truth about you. Shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> Yeah, it's Riley Day. Yeah, it's Riley Day. And the island he's on is Kiowa, okay. And the Stripes are guy, and his team's okay. But they're not top 10. And he knows that, A. And Kado's all right. But he's not RJ. And the rest of the squad's going to waste RJ. Your real best guard in the last decade stole his girl and bounced because he hates RJ. Have you ever made the NIT and refused to play? Have you ever drank a beer that isn't an IPA? Have you ever edited Sean Paul till you are blue in the face? Have you ever listened to a Creed album all the way? Achilles heels, you killing yourself. What is it, your bigs? Don't you got a youth group to run? Card ain't the only one touching the kids. I know you're going to text <sighs> Edit that out. I'll pray for the kid. You act like swear words are mortal sins. Nah, fuck that shit. I hate the way that you <laughs> preach, the way that you teach. I hate the way that you laugh. I hate the way that you dress like you're running late on your way home from the mass. I hate the pot is the roof, and that is the truth. That shows a disaster. I hate that I know that if I ran a race against you, that you would be faster. And I know you're thinking, thou shall not kill. Well, I got confessing to do. No matter whatever we say, your center is still Van Allen Lou. We know there's a reason that I'm never the target when we're battling dudes. If you take it there, then I'm taking it further. Bluff, that's something you don't want to do. You going to stop the recording or that's the show. Appreciate y'all being here.